Hey everyone, welcome to another Locker Room Talk edition of the Dan and Joe Sports Show. As always, I'm Dan. And I'm Joe. All right, Joe, in this Locker Room Talk edition, uh, we have brought the most famous voodoo priestess of New Orleans back from the dead. Did she ever die? Who knows? If you watch, uh, watch American Horror Story, maybe she didn't. But for our purposes, she was dead. We brought her back to life. And now she is bestowing magical gifts upon certain college football programs and individuals. And Joe, uh, there's one program in all of college sports that has maybe been more demonically possessed than any other. And it goes, uh, you know, it goes across the board. And it's funny because both of these schools were actually kind of playing each other, and it was East Carolina and NC State. And I feel like NC State had uh, had a little bit of the hex put on them because they had the chance to play in the national championship in baseball. And, of course, COVID knocked them out, and Vanderbilt wasn't in their place. They weren't able to play in a big bowl game last year after winning a bunch of games. I think that was also a COVID-related thing. But East Carolina – Last year, they had one of the best-looking baseball teams in the country, had Texas dead to rights, and then fell apart. And then suddenly, when they're playing the other hard luck kids in North Carolina, NC State, they have a kicker that misses an easy extra point, and then at the very end of the game, misses a field goal to win the game. And, Joe, I'm saying that NC State has given all of their terrible luck in all the sports to East Carolina now – and Marie Laveau needs to give East Carolina a salt bath so they can walk once so they can wash away all the demonic possession that has happened in beautiful Greenville, South Carolina. It definitely seems that way, Dan, because there's just no other explanation. It just doesn't make sense how many times they've been so close in college baseball to make it to the World Series. I mean, I think they're the winningest program that has not been to Omaha. And then now you add, you know, football to the equation. Well, and Joe, you look at it, I mean, when you watch all their sporting events, their fans are really passionate. I mean, with baseball, yeah. they have one of the coolest environments of any of the ones I saw. And that football game against NC State, which a lot of people had as a, either a dark horse ACC championship contender, some even a make the college football playoff contender, they should have beaten them. And they had every single chance to. And this poor kicker, I'm sure that he's the most hated man in Greenville, South Carolina right now. Oh, no doubt. I mean, think about how that would have changed you know, the entire complexity of the ACC schedule and season, you know, with them kind of being that dark horse coming into the year NC State. Well, Joe, I mean, like I said, I want to see them do good because Greenville, South Carolina is on my list of places I want to go because when I took a, a test online one time, which, which city in America is most suited for you to live in, Greenville, South Carolina was by far my number one. Uh, that's definitely a good sign for you. So that's a sign. I, I want East Carolina to be good so that I have an excuse to go to something they have, be it baseball or football. And I'm going to need yeah. Marie Laveau to give them that salt bath so they can get everything straightened out because they're right there right now, but the demon is just taking it away from them. Right, for sure. All right, Joe, the next one that we got uh, is Mac Brown, staying in the state of North Carolina. And Joe, Marie Laveau needs to give Mac Brown some platform shoes so he can keep up his dancing. Uh, if you watch that game on Saturday, you don't, you can't blame him for dancing in the locker room after they won because they had no business winning. I believe that uh, my favorite, my national championship coach, Gene Chizik, while I was at Auburn, now North Carolina's defensive coordinator, he gave up uh, like 40 points in the fourth quarter, and there was a combined 60 scored in the fourth quarter between the two teams. And, of course, North Carolina ended up winning 63-61 to 61 after two, uh, two failed two-point conversion attempts by Appalachian State on the last two series of the game. Yeah, I just can't believe that. Like, I turned the game off and switched to another game, probably like the start of um, Georgia-Oregon, and I just couldn't believe that they had another chance at the end, too. Yeah, he should have stayed on that App State-North Carolina game. It was much more watchable than Oregon and Georgia. It was, for sure. It was funny because I had a text going, uh, of course, we've had my cousin Tom on the show many times. He's the big North Carolina fan. I've also got another cousin from that same side of the family who went to App State and I had a little, like, text message chain going with them because uh, I thought I thought that they had a great chance App State did to win that game, too, with it being in Boone, North Carolina. 
They've been one of the best group of five teams now for the last 15 years. Always been a tough place to play at. I mean, remember when they were a D2 team, they beat Michigan when they were ranked number one. So I knew this was definitely going to be a difficult game. And like I said, it, you know, Mac Brown's done the dancing thing in the locker room, but I think this one was one of his more jubilant celebrations because losing that game would have been very hard to stomach right there, uh, especially against an in-state school that doesn't have near your resources or your fans. And, you know, frankly, I'm sure that North Carolina thinks of themselves like much superior when it comes to their education too. Oh, no doubt. And it's just crazy to me how um, App State scares somebody like all the time. Like that frequently happens if they don't, you know, even upset somebody. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely one of those teams that you're not getting a whole lot of benefit out of scheduling them uh, because you have a very high likelihood of losing to them. So, like I said, uh, Mac Brown getting his platform shoes so he can keep dancing the night away. And, you know, Gene Chiswick's probably going to need some Valium for his defense right now because it is, it is broken right now. It definitely. It's really bad. All right, Joe. Um, you know, the next one we have, we've been talking about programs that have been a little bit cursed. Uh, we have one right now that really just everything's kind of trending bad outside of baseball, which they had their high point where they got to host Ole Miss at home and then never scored a run. And Southern Miss, I mean, really outside of baseball, it's been pretty rough in all of their sports. And what I was thinking, Joe, is, you know, they have their landmark coach in baseball. He couldn't beat Ole Miss last year, and that was really a very upsetting series for Southern Miss after there was such fandom, there was so much money going into getting those tickets. Uh, yeah. We saw Southern Miss go against Liberty and Hugh Freeze and give them all they could want, but then ultimately lose in four overtimes. And what that made me think of, Joe, is what the Southern Miss football program needs and what they need Marie Laveau to dish out for them is they need a scandal at a very high-level coach, a Bobby Petrino, Hugh Freeze-level scandal, and get one of these coaches that's at a great Power 5 job and doing very well, and he's forced to have to accept the Southern Miss job and stay there because people don't want to hire him, and then he can rebuild the football program. Yeah, I mean, they definitely need some resurgence. You know, granted, it does look like things are looking up some, somewhat, but if you can't, you know, close the door on a four-overtime game, that was definitely a gut punch. And especially with uh, the injury to uh, Charlie Brewer, that was the third-string quarterback for Liberty at the end. Yeah, that's that's not good to lose to a third-string quarterback. I mean, that, that just rubs even more salt in the wound. You know, Joe, the only positive thing that I can say for Southern Miss moving forward is that it seems like the Sun Belt is an improvement over Conference USA, which is crazy to think about because, I mean, even like five years ago, you would have said Conference USA was leaps and bounds above the Sun Belt. But now the Sun Belt is starting to look like maybe if they when they do this 12-team expansion, maybe it's possible the Sun Belt could have one of those teams that makes it. I think so, and they also like the Sun Belt with the regional uh, rivalries that you have, like with uh, Lafayette and South Alabama. That's right. So, I, you know, th that's a positive thing. But for right now, to re-energize that football program or maybe that basketball program, right now they need a scandal amongst a very highly successful coach to where he has to go down and take that job in Hattiesburg. Right. All right, Joe, the last one that we have – Involves our favorite, Bo Picks. Of course, he had himself quite a rough game against Georgia. That would mark four times he's had rough games against Georgia. And Joe, he saved the coup de grace for the last one in terms of just putrid quarterback play and really unwatchability. And in this one, of course, uh, he lost 49-3 to off a, against the Georgia team that lost, what, 15 NFL uh, draft picks. Uh, you know, we all expected Georgia to win, but not like that. And, of course, I think Bo's numbers, he was – I think he was like sub-500 passing. He threw two interceptions. He didn't score a touchdown. Oregon didn't even have an offensive touchdown. And so, Joe, what Marie Laveau needs to do is to make it to where Bo Nix has a good frequent flyer subscription to Southwest Airlines because I believe Southwest Airlines is one that doesn't travel much in and out of Atlanta – so that Bo can avoid the state of Georgia and not have to go to a place where he always loses. You made a good point before the show that he definitely uh, needs to avoid Delta Airlines. Yes, he can't. He can't do Delta, Joe, because it's going to go take him through Georgia too much. And he will probably, when he's in Georgia, 
whether he means to or not, he's going to have fumbles. He's going to have sacks. He's going to have interceptions. Right. Right. Definitely avoid that for his sake. That's right, Joe. And one thing I can say too is, you know what, maybe Marie Laveau needs to give uh, Brian Harson a little slap on the back for telling Bo to go on his way. Cause right now he's looking pretty smart about that. That's true. All right, Joe. And uh, we come back, we're going to talk more about uh, Bo's miscues in the Georgia game. And of course, uh, some of the other great stories we had from a fabulous opening weekend. And we're also going to look forward to uh, some of these great week two matchups we have, which arguably in some ways is the equal of week one. Uh, you can catch all of our episodes on Spotify. You of course can also uh, listen to our most recent episodes on our YouTube channel, subscribe to it, the Dan and Joe sports show YouTube channel. And of course you can follow us on Twitter at DJ sports show. And we're also now on Instagram, the Dan and Joe sports show Instagram. And as always, I'm Dan. And I'm Joe.